Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we will be seeing how we can create a simple python program to automate and move our files accordingly using ChatGPT. So let's get this started. Alright, so first things first, let's open the browser and let's go to ChatGPT. So if you're opening ChatGPT for the first time, then please do log in using your social account and once you have that, you can start writing the queries. Alright, so in this case, before writing the query itself, let's first analyze our situation and let's write down our use case. So let's open the Visual Studio code and in here, let's create a new file. So I've created a simple markdown file and I'll upload this to the Git repository as well so that you can use this as a base template. Okay, so first let's write down the question that we want ChatGPT to work on. So what we want is we want ChatGPT to write a program based on few requirements or few instructions. So let's write down those instructions and also let's write down the program outcome that we want for that particular Python script to automate. So our requirement is to write a Python script which is going to take the files from a specified folder and it's going to move those files to the generic OS specific directories. Like let's say in our downloads folder, we have an audio file and we want that file to be present inside the music folder inside of a Windows operating system. So in that way, any file or any folder that is present inside of the downloads folder should be moved accordingly based on the files or its extinction. So what we have written is the program should be able to move the files from a specific directory to a system directory like downloads or documents or pictures based on the file extension. So now let's also write the rules and instructions that this program should follow and also abide by. So our first instruction is going to be to directly get documents, downloads and all these folders paths based on the operating system. We don't want to manually input that because let's say we want to run this program in a Mac operating system or a Windows operating system, the file structure would be different, but we don't want to manually enter that. So it should automatically fetch that and keep that somewhere in its system so that it can use that. Our second instruction is going to be that this particular program should be cross-platform, meaning that it should be able to run in Linux, Mac and Windows in the same manner. Apart from this, we should also specify the location from which this program should automate and take the files from. In this case, it's going to be the source directory from where the files should be moved out from. So we don't want to hard code that inside the program itself. So we should give it an option wherein the user can enter the location of where the file should be moved from. So let's also write another rule to take that as an input parameter in the program itself. All right, so these three instructions should be enough to get the program to take the files and also move those to specific folders like downloads or documents based on the extinction. So now let's say there are a few files which are really old. Now there would be no point in moving those files to those folders like downloads or documents since we'll not be using those anymore. So we can filter out those files and keep those in a separate folder so that we can manually check those files and delete them if required. So let's create a separate directory to store these old files which are let's say not used for more than 30 days. Alright, so now that the files are moved, let's also handle scenarios wherein let's say the movement was interrupted due to some system error or something like that. So basically, we have to write the error handling as well. So in this case, what we'll do is that let's skip the files which could not be moved from this particular directory and let's continue the program and carry on and move the remaining files. So what we have written is that we want to write error handling wherein we want to ignore the files which could not be moved and at the end we want to print out the file names or the files which could not be moved so that we can analyze those files and see what the error could be. Now the error could be printed but let's say it's printing an error which we could not understand as a human. So we want the script to print that error in a human legible format. So let's also add that condition here. So 
So now what our program is going to do is that it's going to recursively go through all the files and folders present inside our specified directory and it's going to move those files based on its extinction. But let's say there is a particular folder which has some files inside of it. Now what happens is that this particular program will go inside of that folder as well and move those specific files. But in most of the scenarios, you don't want to move subdirectories unless and under specified. So in this case, what we'll do is that we'll tell the program to ignore folders. That means we should not move folders. Apart from that, any other file, it should move. So let's also add that condition. All right, so apart from that, in few scenarios, there could be situations wherein the file that you're trying to move already exists in the specified system directory. So in those case, you want to ignore those files as well. So let's also add another condition here. And also let's add another condition saying that keep the files which could not be moved in the same directory instead of moving them. Now the tenth and the final rule is going to be that we want to print the file name and the destination where that particular file was moved to. So we can use that for analysis later on. So let's also add that condition as well. All right, so with that, most of the rules that we wanted have been listed out. So now let's copy and paste this particular instructions instead of ChatGPT, and let's see what program it's gonna come up with. All right, so let's copy this particular snippet and let's create a new file inside of our directory. So let's say script.py. Now inside this, let's paste that and let's save that particular program. All right, now let's open the command line and let's try to execute this particular program on the downloads folder that we have. So let me open the downloads folder once. So as you can see, there are a few files inside of this particular directory. There are a lot of different extinctions that we have here. So now let's run this program on the downloads folder and let's see which files it was able to move. And in this case, what I've done is that I've kept an ISO file, which is already running in some other particular software. So the script should not be able to move this file. That means it should ignore this particular file. So let's see how it's going to perform on this and let's try to execute that now. So let's go back, let's open the terminal. In here, let's type in Python, give a space and then type in the file name. So now let's click on enter. So it's going to ask the source directory. So what you can do is that in this case, let's go back to this particular folder and let's open properties and let's copy this particular file's location. Let's close that, let's paste that here and let's click on enter. Okay, seems like there is an error, but let's open our downloads directory and see what has happened. All right, so seems like most of the files have been moved, but as you can see, this pop underscore OS OS file was not moved. And since it was being used by another program, it had some exceptions. So it seems like there are still few more improvements that can be done on this particular program. So now what you can do is that if you already know Python, you can go through this particular code and improvise this on your own, or you can go back to ChatGPT and tell it that the program is still not running correctly and seems like it's not ignoring the files correctly. So what you can do is that you can just say something like, So what I've done is that I've added another instruction here saying that modify the above code to ignore the file which are being used by another program or a software or a process inside the system. So what ChatGPT has done is that it has written another piece of block here. So what you can do is that you can copy this and as you can see it is telling us to write this here in this particular appropriate directories. So let's go back and let's go to our script.py. Let's close off the terminal for now. So it's telling us to modify this particular method. So let's paste what we have copied previously and let's save that. Now let's try to run the program once again and see what output we're going to get in this particular scenario. So let's clear the screen. Let's type in Python and script.py. So let's try for the downloads once again. 
So it seems like this particular program is still not efficient enough. So let's copy this particular error that we're getting. Let's go back to chat GPT. So what I've told ChatGPT is to modify the above program to ignore any file which could throw this particular exception. So seems like I forgot to add the exception. Let's add that here. Let's save and submit and let's see what it's going to come up with. Okay, so now let's copy this bit once again and let's paste that here. So in this scenario, I'm not trying to understand the program and make the changes accordingly. I'm just using ChatGPT to make the changes and let's see if that thing can execute that program. So let's try that once again. So let's enter the source directory. Alright, so as you can see, the program is still not efficient enough to move the files which are being used by another process. So this could be an issue with the approach that we've taken or issue with the chat GPT itself understanding the query and giving out a program or anything in those lines. But what we have to do in these scenarios is to manually intervene and make the changes accordingly. But apart from those things, as you can see, the program itself is pretty robust and chat GPT has done a pretty good job of writing out the skeletal structure of the program so that we can start working on that skeletal structure instead of writing everything from scratch. So that is a simple example of how you can use ChatGPT and its AI model to actually generate pieces of code that you can use inside your project and also try to create some sample snippets which you can use to test out your theories or things that you want to implement. Alright, so that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.